Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about good Christian leadership. And when I talk to you about it, I am in no way, uh, shape or form, saying that I have good Christian leadership. Um, my works, my demonstration of love will speak for itself. And if you want to give me compliments, you're more welcome uh, to it. But I always feel like the biggest room in my life is a room for improvement. And, you know, I, I make many mistakes. And I'm sure I'll continue to make many mistakes, but the important thing is that I strive uh, to do better. And it's important as Christian leaders that we have a good, humble heart, willing to be teachable and um, <clears throat> be corrected by the Word of God and by our spiritual leaders. And so, um, a couple things I want to talk to you about, first of all, is the subject of love, because the Bible says that love sums up everything. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So what does that look like? Well, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, the Bible says that we have to obey God. So to show love for God, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. So in other words, if we're not obeying God, we're not really showing love towards God. And then <clears throat> the second part is to love your neighbor as yourself. What does that look like? How do you love yourself? Well, you take care of yourself. You feed yourself. You clothe yourself, right? You educate yourself. You care about your personal development, right? Hopefully you correct yourself when you're doing wrong. And so we need to do those things for other people. You know, you see people that have a need. They're hungry. You feed them. They need clothes. You, you clothe them. If they are going the wrong way, you, en you encourage them, you teach them, educate them, just like you would want someone to do for you. The Bible says we should do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. And for me, I always want someone um, <clears throat> to correct me. I always desire spiritual leadership and someone to speak into my life and help me to see the things that I don't see. Because we all have things in our lives that we can't see until someone reveals them to us so that we can improve. And so <clears throat> uh, I want to do that for other people as well. Um, one of the things that, uh, in, with that regard, in that regard of sharing things with other people and using the Word of God to correct them, as Scripture tells us that we should do, uh, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is useful for correction, rebuke, or reproof and it helping people and edifying them <clears throat> in the body of Christ. You know, one thing that I've been accused of, somebody told me that I twist the scriptures on them, you know, uh, I guess for my own benefit or to make them look bad or something. And, you know, I, I never do that because the, the, the point is to love somebody enough to share God's truth with them and to, uh, to have the right heart to desire to see them to grow, you know? Uh, I don't want my own benefit. I, I, I'm sure there's mistakes I've made in scriptures before, you know, because uh, God has not revealed something to me yet, but I would never on purpose try to twist the scriptures to benefit myself or, or, or get any type of gain for myself. It's always been to bless other people and help them to grow in their relationship with God and for them to live in truth because the Bible says the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. And, you know, it's important that uh, for me as a good, uh, to be a good leader, I have to listen to other people. And so the Bible says we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, slow to anger. And so we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should be listening twice as much as we should be talking and so we have to get used to to listening to other people and having a true desire to learn and to grow you know we shouldn't try to like um, <clears throat> I know in marketing we do this but uh, you know from professional consultants they say dominate the conversation you know in sales and all that but from a spiritual perspective we should be listening more not speaking more so it's not about you know, dominating the conversation and having your will done or making sure people are listening to you. As a good leader, of course we want to share the gospel, share the good news and, and help people, but our desire should be to learn and grow and then to help other people to learn and grow. And so um, <clears throat> it should never be for the purpose of, you know, getting someone to think good about you, 
right? So some leaders, they, they want to have a name, they want to have a position and a voice so that people think good thoughts about them and, and give them praise. We should, as a good leader, as a Christian leader, we should be pointing people to Jesus and never pointing them to ourselves. It's never about ourselves. It has to be, we need to have the attitude of, I am nobody by myself, but I am only someone through Christ Jesus. It's the Lord working through me. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of times people misunderstand you as a Christian leader when you speak to them. Um, they feel like you're trying to lessen them or make them lower because of their pride. Um, they have a problem with this. But for me, um, I know that the Bible talks about how God will um, bring us up higher. If we lower ourselves, then God will promote us and bring us up higher. So if a spiritual leader speaks to me and to my life and um, it makes me feel smaller or that I've done something wrong, I'm thankful for that if I have a humble heart. If I'm prideful, then I will look at that person and say, oh, you just wanna make yourself look good. Is that a good attitude to have? I don't think so. So I don't want to point my fingers at somebody that's trying to help me and say, you know, you're just trying to make yourself look good and make me look low. No, if they have a good heart, then they, then they understand. If they understand scripture, they understand that if we humble ourselves as a student, God will lift us up. He gives grace uh, to the humble. You know, he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. He says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up, the scripture says. Hallelujah. So, when I'm, when I'm listening to someone, I don't want to listen to someone uh, to please my ears. I don't want to have itching ears where, hey, just tell me what I wanna hear. Make me feel good about myself. Make me feel like my lifestyle is okay when it's not. If I'm living in sin, I wanna know that I'm doing something wrong so that I can fix it. So I, as a Christian with a good heart, you should always want to know what you're doing wrong, right? Even as a Christian leader, a Christian leader especially, should want to know if something they're doing is out of line with scripture, <clears throat> okay? And so, I just want the truth that will help me to grow. I don't want to hear with my ears things that just make me feel good. And it's important that all of us as God's children have that same attitude, that's humility. And to know that I am nobody by myself, but I'm only victorious through Christ Jesus. It's not about me, you know. Um, I, I never like to uh, brag about myself. You know, I know some, I, I teach martial arts, you know, and I know some martial arts masters that they have pictures of themselves all over the school, like doing all kinds of stuff. Like, it's all about them. They're not pointing anybody to Jesus. They're pointing everybody to themselves. And um, <clears throat> even a lot of pastors talk so much about their own personal accomplishments. You know, I've, I've done this, I've done this, and I got this big house, and I got this nice car, and, you know, I'm, you know, they talk about all their accolades and accomplishments instead of pointing people to Jesus. And it's important as Christian leaders that we do that, that we stay humble and uh, not be proud and just uh, point people to Jesus. <clears throat> um, if you only want people to tell you what you want to hear, then you're never really going to grow, right? Because if everybody's telling you just what you want to hear to make you feel good, you're never going to approach sin in the right way. We're supposed to approach sin violently, by force, like get this thing out of my life in Jesus' name because Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy, and God, has come to give life and life more abundantly and he's provided the armor of God for us to fight this spiritual warfare. We're supposed to be strong warriors. You know, Psalm 144.1 says, he teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight, you know, and we, uh, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. They're, it's about that spiritual wickedness in high places trying to attack us and get us to think the wrong thing, right? So we gotta be warriors willing to fight back in the spirit realm. <clears throat> You know, 
again, I, I'm not, as, as I'm talking about Christian leadership, and, and in no way am I perfect at all. I, I make mistakes, but I strive to be holy, to live holy life, and not to live in willful sin. You know, I have committed willful sin. I have repented of those things, and I got my life right with the Lord. I mean, I've done all kinds of stuff. You know, I remember when I was growing up, I was smoking and uh, getting drunk all the time, going to pick up the girls and just having sex and um, uh, cursing and just hanging around with all the wrong people. You know, and even as uh, as a Christian, I have fallen into sin. But it, the important thing is that we repent, right? We repent. We get our heart right with God. And I am in no way sinless in my life. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, a lot of Christians, they make the excuse. They take that scripture and they say, oh, since all have sinned, and remember that word have is past tense, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in the past, and therefore we need a Savior. That does not mean we continue to live a life of sin. The Bible says in Hebrews that if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remains no sacrifice for our sins. That's scary. So we got to make sure that we are doing everything we can <clears throat> to live a repented, sinless lifestyle. And what I mean by sinless is <clears throat> not uh, committing sin. There are sins of commission and there are sins of omission. The sins of commission are the ones that you know you're doing, the willful sin, and you're doing it anyway. Okay? And I believe that will weigh on your salvation. That sin separates us from God. Then there's the sins of omission. Those are the ones that you just don't know that you're sinning, all right? Or you're justifying your sin. You think it's okay because of a certain scripture or circumstances or whatever. And you're not really convinced that it's actually sinning against God, so you do it anyway. Um, <clears throat> those things need to be corrected. But I don't believe they're um, as bad as committing willful sin, things that you know that are wrong. I have done some really bad things in my life that were sins of omission. I had no idea that it was the against Scripture, and I would justify it with other Scriptures or whatever, or, or reasoning in my mind, and continue to do it. But then once the Lord revealed to me, hey, that is actually a sin that's sinning against my word, then I correct it immediately. You know, just, God, please forgive me. I repent. Please take this from me, and I'm going to live right in that area now. So I've sinned, but it's important that we, when we realize we've sinned, that we stop doing it. We don't do it on purpose, all right? So, for example, if I know that the Bible says, let no unwholesome talk proceed out of your mouth, only that which is edifying to the hearer, and it says, like, we should not be cursing, <clears throat> then if I know that already, that that's a sin, I'm not going to go curse at somebody, right? Um, if I know that, um, if I realize that having sex outside of marriage is a sin, then I'm, I'm no longer going to do that anymore. I'm going to stop from doing that because you recognize it's against God's word. If you are um, stealing and you think you have a good reason for it because you're trying to feed your family and they're hungry and you realize you know you were justifying that before thinking it was okay because you have a good cause to help your family and you realize oh wait it's still sin against God then when you realize that you got to stop doing it you can't keep doing it right and so um, same thing with lying a lot of people justify their lies well I'm lying because I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. I don't want to tell them the truth about themselves. Well, you, you, you can't do that because you're basically saying that it's okay to disobey God so that I make this person feel better. You know, once you realize that, hey, that's a sin, I'm not supposed to lie to them, okay? And there's a difference between like not saying anything all, at all and then saying something as a lie. If you don't want to tell somebody something, that's fine, but don't lie about it. Just keep it to yourself, okay? But um, if you're lying, then you are bearing false witness against someone, and that is a sin, okay? Um, all right, the next thing was... I want to remind you that if you have been living in sin, don't be all down on yourself and, and feel like 
you're no good, you're not worthy. Because God has created you very special and unique. You have a purpose in this life. And remember, God is love. God loves you. I love you just the way you are. You know what? But God loves you so much that he don't want you to stay the same. And so he will put people into your life to help correct you and encourage you and build you up to, to do the right thing. He's given us the five-fold ministry, the Bible says, for the equipping of the saints. So we're supposed to be humble and as a student and listen to spiritual leadership and say, God, please, please help me to learn and grow. And um, the Bible talks about, uh, you know, we cannot serve two masters because we'll love one and hate the other or despise the other one. And it's important that we have spiritual leadership that we honor, that we can learn from and grow from and not point fingers at them and, and not, um, I remember I went through this years ago when I was going to a church, I had a pastor that I respect a lot. And then over time, I just started getting this feeling like uh, something negative about him. Instead of being teachable, or if I have a question, just go ask him, right? If you have a question, just go ask. Say, sir, I'm not understanding this. Or ma'am, I'm not understanding this. Can you please explain where you're coming from um, and share some scriptures on that with me? Okay. If you haven't watched my video yet on how to correct a leader, go and watch that. It's very helpful so that you know how to communicate to spiritual leadership. Okay, So God will forgive you. No one is too far away from God that they cannot come back or that they cannot. You have not committed so much sin that God will not forgive you. Okay, God will forgive you if you repent. That means turn to God away from your sin. Don't do it anymore. Have a pure heart. Say, God, I want to please you. I don't want to please myself. Uh, it's not about me, God. It's about you. And so that's so important. And as a spiritual leader, we're talking about spiritual leadership today, it's also really important that you don't take your Bible and keep hitting somebody over the head with the Bible uh, that don't want to hear God's Word. Okay, Now, all Christians should want to hear God's Word. But there's a lot of people that are not Christians that you keep trying to shove God's Word down their throat and it pushes them away. It's important to demonstrate God's love and then share the Word of God and see if they accept it. But continue to demonstrate the love of God. Not just teach the love of God, but, but show it with your life, right? Loving people, forgiving people, encouraging people, and just not hitting them upside the head with the Bible. Now there's also Christians, they call themselves Christians, but they resist the Word of God. They rebel against the Word of God because they're living a sinful lifestyle. You know, and they might have that attitude of like, quit pushing God's Word on me or quit forcing, you know, telling me all that. They think you're actually trying to control them with the Word of God. And they feel that way because they're living in willful sin and they don't want to hear the truth. But... <clears throat> not realizing that you're sharing from the depths of love in your heart because you care about them so much and you just want to see them to grow. You know, And sometimes there's a time where you just sit back and say, okay, God, I've done my part. I can't do anything for this person anymore except for pray for them because they don't want to listen to your word. So you just put them, put them in the hands of God and hope the best for them. But you know, um, it would be best for that person if they submitted to spiritual leadership, of course, and humbled themselves under the Word of God and listen and for you spiritual leaders you know it's so important that you are in ministry for the right reasons that it's not for personal gain you know there's too, too many people that are in ministry for financial gain they want to just make money off of it um, or for a reputation like they want to look good hey I want to be a pastor just so I can look good and holy and everybody will like me and respect me that's a horrible reason for being a spiritual leader we're supposed to be humble not prideful not trying to get attention for ourselves. we're trying to point people to Jesus right and if you're in spiritual leadership just for authority so that you can tell people what to do and have your way and that's the wrong way you should be submitting to spiritual leadership as well right you should be respecting other spiritual leaders and letting them feed you and teach you God's word. If they correct you, humble yourself and receive that correction. Because you don't want to be in ministry for the wrong reasons. You need to have a pure heart, love God truly, and demonstrate that with your life as much as possible. Now, we've all missed the mark. 
I've missed the mark several times and I've failed and I uh, have made bad mistakes. But the important thing is that your heart is right and you repent when you make a mistake and then you get it right with God and keep moving forward with the right mindset and the right heart, truly loving God, truly loving people and uh, God will continue to bless you for that. So I hope this encouraged you and uh, just continue to grow in leadership, stay humble and continue to be a lifetime student. Even as a leader, I'm always a student. I always wanna learn, I always wanna grow. And uh, if you're, you know, Bruce Lee said, if you're, if you're filled to the top, you, your cup's filled to the top, you have no more room. You need to empty your cup so you have more room uh, to grow. So empty your cup today, be teachable, be humble. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Listen to your spiritual leaders. And if you are a spiritual leader, set the example by loving God and loving people and just having a pure heart to do the right thing and live a repented lifestyle, and God will bless you. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. And I wanna pray for you real quick. Father, I just pray that you just bless every person that has heard this message. All the spiritual leaders, I pray, Father, you just help them to have the right heart in ministry. And all those that are uh, under spiritual leadership, I pray that you would help them to have the heart, right heart to humble themselves, to listen to your word, to listen to men and women of God that are here, that you put here to help us to grow, to be closer to you, Lord. We love you and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.